So for me, uh, transmissibility also just provides a, in my opinion, bringing the gap to safety. I want to live in a place where I don't have to worry about getting beat up because someone doesn't understand me or <laughs> is confused. You know, like I, there's plenty of people who are confused and don't understand folks who are not trans and they're not getting beat up every day on the street. Um, I think we need to make a point that there are different types of people and honestly, your gender has nothing to do with your sexuality and your sexuality has nothing to do with your gender. It all can be different, it can all be mixed together. It's, it's everything and nothing at the same time. Um, I think about safety with going out and meeting people. I've been in positions where I've had to sit there and wonder, okay, I present male, I think of myself as trans, but when I go out, when I was going on dates presenting female, I didn't say, hello, I'm a woman. <laughs> as I sat down to eat, I just went as myself. And when do you drop the bomb and how do you tell someone where it doesn't feel like you're disclosing something that's scary? I don't know if you've ever had that experience before. I know you've been married for quite some time. It took a while for her, my spouse to want to go out in public with me. Mm. I want to say that it was about almost three months when she was okay with me going out in public with her. And then she put on the, um, well, you have to wear jeans. You're not going to wear a skirt or dress when we go out. How did that make you feel having her tell you what you could or couldn't wear? I, I took it as a victory just for going out. Nice. I had the, Baby steps. Yeah, baby steps. Mm -hmm. The next time we went out, we went, to, um, <laughs> we went out to Christmas Eve Mass at Metropolitan Community Church in Hartford. I did wear a dress for Christmas Eve Mass. <laughs> nice. Beautiful. <laughs> and that's just interesting to me, too, because, I mean... Dress, pants, skirts, whatever, <laughs> from the dawn of time, men and women were wearing both. Oh, yeah. even a thing, um, which I, I think it's just so many things have been commodified and turned into something else that it isn't, we forget that there's actually people behind these words, people behind these ideas, and people behind these thoughts, and these people are real, and these people sometimes get really hurt. And don't people in Scotland wear kilts? Oh, and, and, um... To me, that's open him, like the skirt I got. The, I mean, the Jesus plan, wore a dress, right? as far as I know, yeah. both, all day, every day, everybody. Um, but I, I think the more trans visibility we have, the more normalized it will be. And it needs to be normalized because we are, I mean, no one's normal, but it's normal. Yeah. I, I, I don't like to use that word. I really don't. However, I'm trying to just prove the point that we shouldn't have to have a different set of rules that we need to follow. And we don't have to, we, we shouldn't apologize for who we are. Right. We're not hurting or anyone. Or have to explain it. We're the ones, we've had a lot of hurt. We've had a lot of heart take, heartaches. How much tears have we cried? Mm. Too many. Too many. And I, I don't think it's, um, I don't think it's that much to ask just to feel safe. No, just be common, <laughs> just be common sense. I, I, I mean, I, we're not asking for the world. No. Can we be safe? Can we go yeah. get a job without getting fired for who we are? Yes, currently there are 27 states in America, more than half, who do not have any explicit laws protecting the rights of LGBTQIA plus folks. Meaning, if someone's at their job, doing well, decides to transition, they can just let them go. And I've heard reasons from, it's distracting, um, we feel uncomfortable, um, what about the kids, we can't do this in front of such and such. I have a kid, I have nieces, I've been a teacher. I stayed in the closet so long because I was just scared that I'd never be able to work with kids again. And it had happened. I went on an overnight field trip and a couple of parents were like, we don't want McStarda to be in our kid's bunk. And thankfully I worked at a super awesome school and they said, well, your kids can't come on the trip. We don't wow. discriminate. Um, and this good, is the team that this is the team, team that they've been assigned to. McStarda is mm -hmm. their teacher and that is who they'll be camping on if they have a problem with that. You guys do not have to come. And that was very, very affirming. And I think, um, that's great. They backed you up, but yeah, there's, but there's not enough really, of that. It's still really hurt. <laughs> but there's not enough of that in the world. There's not enough people having your back or people having our backs. It's just, like embarrassing that suddenly the people who I am, I can't be trusted with children overnight. Like, what just... the heck? What is that about? You know, I've heard stories of people hurting children across the globe, all gender spectrums, all sexualities, and it's just really hurtful to just, because I'm being myself, um, suddenly my professional life is called into question, and that's just a really scary, scary place to be, and it just doesn't feel very fair. So, I don't know, trans visibility to me means safety. Um, if we can achieve that, it will be a much safer place for everyone, including 
non-trans people because it just be a more accepting place. Somewhere there's that 13, 14 year old child living in the wrong gender. They know it. You are going to make a difference in someone else's life. You, and you don't know it, but you, you are. Um, one day, when they grow up, hopefully they won't have to go through what you did. Yeah. Went through. Um, actually, I was, I had a similar hard time as you um, once, and year about five or six years ago, one of my former um, campers actually found me on Facebook and wrote a, me a beautiful note and did say that, like, you know, I, I wasn't even out. I was just very affirming. I was presenting female. I was dating girls, but I never shared that with my class, but he just knew, and I, I, I kind of knew, but I don't like saying I know that about kids. I don't know. But I was just so happy um, to hear that and read that, because you don't know, and um, I, I re it's not fun to know who you are and not be able to be that person. And no. It was just really nice to hear from him, and he's doing fantastic. He's amazing. And I'm just... We need more teachers, more people, more adults who can support kids because we are there. They're there. They know who they are. They're not going through phase. They don't need to see a doctor. I mean, everybody can go to therapy, but yeah. it's not a bad thing. Everyone can go to therapy, not just because you're trans. Um, parents, no queer kids, um, <laughs> just getting help for everyone is just going to make everyone safer. Exactly. And you know what? People have to realize, I don't care who you are. You could have, you could be me struggling to avoid a treat to me as I can go through the drive through once an extra week. Or you could have LeBron James' salary. Mm -hmm. I don't care who we are, all 340 million of us, we have more in common with each other than you think. Yes. Very simple. You know, we, we, I'm sick of all, this group is here, this group, we're all being divided. But you all know what? Here's how we get things in common. We all want more green currency in our wallet. <laughs> and we all bleed red. Mm -hmm. Why don't we, instead of pitting against each other and single us out for being different, why don't we help each other earn that green, mm -hmm. protect each other from bleeding that red? Mm 